we're heralding back the, the almost forgotten retail shareholder? I think it's a short term re uh, relief for the market and I guess uh, traders, investors should use it quite well because the medium term, long term problems are still there. It's the short term uh, liquidity problems that have been addressed overnight and really it's more symbolic rather than uh, anything else seeing the overnight index swap rate plus 50 basis points instead of 100 basis points for the US dollar swap lines. So if we have a look at the Australian market, a fantastic day on the market, a rise of 2.6%. It is the fourth consecutive day of gains for the Aussie market so we've seen again every single day this week and we've seen some good volumes flow through as well with 5.8 billion dollars being traded a lot to absorb on today's market domestically we saw retail sales still looking pretty anemic with a rise of 0.2 percent building approvals plummeted down by 10.7 percent when the market was expecting a rise of three percent the China PMI numbers the manufacturing numbers coming out with a read of 49 in fact we saw new orders and new export orders declining, new export orders still below that 50, uh, 50 mark and London's metals exchange metals are declining there. Um, and so a myriad of uh, announcements and news to absorb, but of course the market really focused in on the coordinated central uh, bank action overnight, and that was a huge positive for the markets. In fact, if we have a look at the top 200 stocks on the Aussie share market, we saw 170 of them rising. Let me just bring up a market map showing you the gainers and the losers for the day. The losers are in red, the gainers in green. You can see it's green across the board. One area of weakness were, was the property sector. It's still managed a slight gain but after those building approval numbers came out we did see the gains in the property sector come off but altogether a fantastic fourth day of gains for the Aussie share market. I want to bring Colin. Uh, currencies the Aussie dollar also coming in for a, a bit of excitement but not uh, certainly coming off its highs of the day. We did see a big move in terms of the Aussie dollar. In fact, overnight we saw it gaining around about two cents. And there's been a couple of positive, uh, I guess, positive developments. One is that we saw China cutting its reserve uh, requirement ratio for banks for, for the first time in around about three years from the record of 21.5% down to 21%. So that's a positive in terms of things like commodity prices. That's good for the Aussie dollar. But then we do saw that domestic economic news coming out, and that was the negative. And then we saw China's manufacturing numbers coming out and that was also a negative. In terms of this coordinated bank action, I guess that's really the driver of risk assets like the Aussie dollar and the equity markets at the moment. But we have seen this before. We saw coordinated central bank action mm. back on the 15th of September when these US swap lines were first put in place. And look where the market is now compared to where we were at September, su substantially lower. So I guess in terms of this announcement today, um, the European debt crisis, really we look at it in terms of short term, medium term problems as well as long-term problems. And one of the short-term problems was that we were starting to see interbank lending drying up. Confidence was disappearing there. And this is um, designed to increase liquidity in the system, US dollar liquidity. So if we have a look at the impacts of that on the market, if you increase US dollar liquidity, you're really flooding the market with more US dollar, which is devaluing the US dollar further, probably leads to inflation down the track and probably in the medium longer term are uh, good news for gold but then in the medium term you've got the solvency problem the solvency problem of the pigs like Portugal Italy Iceland Greece Spain mm. and the solvency of the banks you've got massive recapitalization which needs to be done by the European banks by June next year so you've got the medium term problems and then you've got the long term problems which comes from having having 17 countries with one currency and no fiscal union so probably some physical integration or a breakup of the eurozone there so some of the short-term problems have been dealt with but a lot of the medium long-term problems still yet to go and we're going to be talking about